Good evening, everyone. I declare the Ordinary Council meeting open at um, 18.03 this evening. Good evening, councillors, staff, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting today is being held on Wadjuk Noongar Buja, and I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to Elders past, present and future. I thank all past and present members of the community that have supported the city to better understand and value Noongar culture within the city of Wanneroo. I invite you to bow your head in prayer. Lord, we thank you for blessing our city, our community and our council. Guide us in all our decision making to act fairly, without fear or favour and with compassion, integrity, wisdom and honesty. May we show true leadership, be inclusive of all, and guide all of the city's people and many families to a prosperous future that all may share. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Please note that the proceedings of tonight's meeting will be live broadcast online with the exception of matters discussed behind closed doors. That broadcast will remain available via the City of Wanneroo website following the conclusion of the meeting. Item one is attendances and they are per as of record and uh, Councillor Wright is on a leave of absence. Um, public question time and statement time. The following rules apply to the public question and statement time. Public questions and statements should only relate to the business of the local government and should not be a personal statement or opinion. Only questions relating to matters affecting the local government will be considered at a council meeting and only questions that relate to the purpose of the meeting will be considered at a special council meeting. Questions may be taken on notice and responded to after the meeting. Questions may not be directed at specific council members or a city employee. Questions are not to be framed in such a way as to reflect adversely on a particular council member or a city employee. First priority will be given to persons who are asking questions relating to items on the current council meeting agenda and second priority will be given to public statements. Only public statements regarding items on the council agenda under consideration will be heard. Each person seeking to ask questions or make a statement may address the council for a maximum of three minutes each. Um, we have a question here from John Quinn Liven. Uh, John, would you like to be able to come to the podium and just give us your name and your suburb, please? Thank you. How does it work? Yep. The red light's on, so it's on. It's on. Um, well, thank you for your time this evening. Um, firstly, I'm on the Council of Owners for the Green Lifestyle Village, Nangara. Um, we've been working with, alongside um, Jordan Wright, Councillor Jordan Wright. Unfortunately, he's away. And I've been offshore, got back yesterday, uh, 30, 30 days uh, offshore. Um, so we haven't had much time to prepare anything and my colleague Heather did come to the, yep. the last session and ask for a postponement and I'd like to reiterate that and ask for a postponement till June when Jordan Wright is back. Mr Quinn Liven, um, I have already decided to do a procedural motion on that item to defer it to next month and that will progress as we go through the council agenda. So that will be what's happening, okay? Okay. Thank you. So Any, do you want to discuss anything else about that item? Yes, so I, it's, it's a decision then you guys will make tonight whether we can postpone it. And that will happen with the procedural motion that I move this evening. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the second um, person with questions on the agenda is a Russell Burnett. Russell, could you please come to the, count, uh, to the podium and give us your name and suburb? Okay, well then maybe you would like to send your questions to uh, council, um, to the city, and then um, our directors can respond to them appropriately. Or to your president, through your president. Uh, Mr Burnett, what I'll do is I'll let Joel Richardson go first, and then 
and um, so Joel, if you'd like to come up to the podium, give us your name and the suburb you live in, Joel. <clears throat> Certainly, thank you very much. I'm Joel Richardson, I'm in Girraween. You heard from uh, Laurel last week, I know you're voting on the poor tonight. I just wanted to first of all thank you all for listening to us in the first place. Um, I know you probably haven't seen that many Girraween residents at once before. Um, also to take the opportunity to thank James and um, Brett for also the help that they've given us. But <clears throat> I also wanted to say sorry if it looked like we scoffed at a lot of the very good ideas that were given normally, which would normally apply in a common sense issue towards this sort of thing. And I can assure you that we didn't approach this or want to close this poor without thinking of all of those things. And in fact, we're the residents most affected in terms of access. And it's a shame in general, but it's, it's please understand that we've already gone through those things and thought about those things. And Laurel, in fact, is the closest to the alleyway, goes to work, as she said, every morning. And she's chosen on our experience over the last 24 months to go around and she's walking the longest. So I think that lets you all know where it's at. And I just wanted to remind everyone of that because they were common sense sort of responses. And I'm sorry if we look like we scoffed at them because they were common sense. It's just we've been there and, and done that, so to speak. And just finally, I had the privilege of growing up in um, Duncraig with my family home still being there and my parents still being there. And I'm reflecting on what's happened to Girraween in the last two years. And why it hasn't happened to Duncraig is because I go back and forth all the time to see my parents. And we share a police force, we share a state government, we share the laws. The only thing that's different is basically the residents and the council. And we've had a really positive experience with engaging the council and I hope <clears throat> that continues. And I hope that you'll have us the same when we come to you with a couple of other problems that have arisen in Girraween over the last two years. And in return, hopefully listen to us and, and help us come to the best solutions of those. But most of all, thank you. And um, thanks for the questions and thanks for caring. You obviously cared. It was obvious. It wasn't just people pretending. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joel. I also have a question in writing from Mrs. Klonowski from Karama. Um, and one of the questions we, that we've responded to them in writing, but um, I will um, read them out now. First of all, can the City of Wanneroo please clarify what mechanisms there will be to protect the significantly significant biodiversity within these areas that are yet to be mapped. And this is regarding PSO 20523, the consideration of Amendment 202 to District Planning Street Number 2, following advertising. The approved response by the Director of Planning and Sustainability states there is approximately 250 hectares of land situated in the northwest and southeastern quadrants of Nirabup industrial area, which the revised planning framework identifies as being subject to further structure planning. The biodiversity in these areas would undergo assessment at multiple stages before any subdivision or development on this land would be contemplated. These areas require a detailed environmental assessment prior to any further structure planning being undertaken to facilitate works on the land. A major part of that environment assessment would include undertaking flora and fauna surveys to identify the extent of any significant biodiversity or threatened ecological communities. The assessment would need to be reviewed and deemed satisfactory at the state level through the EPA, at the federal level by the Department of Climate Change, Energy, the Environment and Water, and water. If there are protected flora and fauna species under the Commonwealth Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act 1999, the outcome of that environmental assessment will then be used to inform the extent of any land needed to be retained as native vegetation and whether any development of the land is possible or not. Her second question was, can the city explain why clearing along the eastern end of Flynn Drive was done without any evidence of recognition of the vegetation for its connectivity function? The approved response by the Director of Assets is this section of clearing was undertaken by Bankshire Grove Developments as part of their subdivisional conditions for the northeast precinct of the Bankshire Grove Estate. Bankshire Grove Developments cleared the land under approval from the state government ministerial statement 280. 
so they had approval from the state government. Now, um, Russell, do you have any questions that you want to bring about items this evening? Um, you can you you can ask anything about council business, um, you, but please tell us your name and the suburb you live in. Thank you. Sorry, can I just clarify? Have I got three or five minutes? Five, isn't it? Five. Five. Thank you. Uh, Russell Burnett, one forty-four Emerald Drive, Carabooter. Um, this is a complaint, but also I'm, I'm seeking questions, answers to this complaint. Um, a local football club has got a grant for solar panels and batteries. Proposal put to council to buy that renewable energy uh, from from the clubs, and that will result in reduced Mr. carbon Burnett, footprint. Mr. Burnett, have you spoken to the president of the club? and that the president of the club can represent the issue to council and negotiate with council. Um, do you have that authority from the club to bring this petition to council? I'm surprised you're asking this. I've been meeting with your director last week. I've been meeting with the Department of Local Government and Sports and Cultural Industries. I'm with, asking with your if staff. you... Yes, the president knows I'm raising this issue with the mayor. OK, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that the president of the club is aware that you're here speaking on behalf of the club here. Well, I'm actually more of a rate payer. You can go ahead now, please. Okay. So the proposal was that you, you pay for the renewable energy at a cheaper price, reducing your carbon footprint. This is at no cost to council. Now, I attended a meeting with a director and staff on the 3rd of May and it was brought to the attention of the director that council had endeavoured to misappropriate our grant funds. We had requested city... Excuse me. Yes. Um, that is an accusation that I would question. Um, which member of um, the city did you speak to? And I will ask the responsible director if there has been a misappropriation, because I don't think they have. I think they would be held in reserve and that would I would hold you to account can, for that can statement. Can I ask a question first? No. Okay. You, uh, you spoke against the council about uh, misappropriation Debbie, Debbie, of sorry. funds and yes. I'm not going to have that. Um, well, Ms. nor am I. That's Jennings, do you have a response or Ms. Terralink? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I did meet with Mr Burnett um, uh, a couple of weeks ago and he raised the issue of the use of some funds to do an investigation into the solar panels um, and an explanation was provided to Mr Burnett at the time about the use of the funds. Um, and is the investigation um, public of what the results of that investigation was, uh, Ms Terralink? Uh, through you, Mayor, I think it was more of a misunderstanding than a need for an investigation in terms of the use of the funds. And I understand that um, the manager who was also with me at the time, the manager of Infrastructure Capital Works, explained the situation to uh, Mr Burnett and indicated that um, the city had um, used some of its own funds towards that investigation. So could you please withdraw that statement of could, misappropriation could, of could, funds of the City of Wanneroo because we did not misappropriate the funds? Thank you. Withdraw that statement now. Uh, can, I, uh, can I clarify that, please? You stated misappropriation yeah, yeah, could, of could, funds. Could, could, could you I, withdraw that statement, please? Sorry, I, I think the director may be wrong in how she's responded to that question. I'm sorry. Could you withdraw that statement, please? I said it, an attempt to misappropriate the funds in that you use our grant, try to use our grant fund for solar panels and batteries and undertook a maintenance report for a building that was not part of the request. We that, did that, not... That, that request um, was talking about ceiling stains, internal ceiling stains, had nothing to do with the structural report, had no relationship to our grant. We are responsible for that money. Mr. Now, can the direct, can the direct Mr Burnett, please be quiet. Ms Terralink, the report was paid for by the City of Wanneroo, wasn't it? It was not paid for by any grant funds at all, was it? 
through you, Mayor. Um, my understanding is that the, there was part of the report that related to the solar panels, which was paid for by the grant, and there was also part of the report that dealt with some other maintenance issues that I understand the city paid for. Do you have the division of the amounts of money pay, paid for the different things? We'll have to take that question on notice. Thank you. We will give you that information, but I still... Um, I, we will give you that information and we will... I'm speaking, to, please, do not speak over me. We will give you that information, but you must understand, to accuse us in a public forum incorrectly, I hold that quite contemptuous and it is not appropriate in this place. You are accusing the staff and you're accusing us as a body of being uh, appropriating misconduct and I will not have it. Now, if you are going to continue to accuse instead of looking towards working together for the benefit of the community, um, and it's a question, you haven't asked a question yet, you've just accused, um, I have to ask you to step down. If you have a question, go straight to the question, please, Mr Burnett. The question, I guess, for the director. Did the city ask, ask to pay the $2,400 bill, which included the maintenance report? Eight out of 10 pages were about the maintenance of the club rooms, which was not part of our request. Mr CEO will answer um, that, Mr for, Burnett. For you, uh, Madam Mayor, I think this question is getting into somewhat details that are fairly administrative in the context of a grant, a grant management process. Um, we'll take them all on notice, provide a comprehensive answer in the minutes that the public and Mr Burnett can read. And Mr uh, Burnett, you've had your time. You were actually supposed to have three minutes and you've had six minutes. So uh, you've, sorry. there's no more questions. You've had your time. You can sit down now. I've ruled it, Mr Burnett. Please sit down. Thank you. Are there any further questions from the um, gallery? Thank you. From the community? Thank you. OK, item four, confirmation of minutes. We have the uh, minutes from the Ordinary Council meeting held on the 18th of April. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Deputy Mayor Treby, seconder. Councillor Herridge? Uh, Councillor Baker, do you...? No, I'm dealing with the 18th of April 1st, okay. which is OCO 104-23. Okay, so moved Deputy Mayor Treby, seconded Councillor Herridge. Uh, do I have any speakers against? If I have no speakers against, uh, we will go to the ballot. And we had one councillor who voted against, which was Councillor Nguyen. The rest of the councillors supported it, which was 11, and I say that that is carried. Um, the second um, minutes, which is SCO 2523, which is the minutes of the special council meeting held on the 9th of May. Do I have a mover and seconder? Deputy Mayor Treby, seconder. Councillor Parker, do I have any speakers against this? A question, item? please, Madam Mayor. Yes, Councillor yes, Baker. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through you through the Chair. Uh, as you would be aware, Councillor Wright is uh, not here tonight, of course. He's on approved leave. Uh, I understand uh, late last week you wrote to uh, Ms Smart uh, of the City asking that an amendment be made to the minutes, requesting that... What is your question, Councillor Baker? Yes. Uh, the question is that uh, he requested that, and he's not here, of course, he requested that the minutes be amended to note the several impartiality interests that were declared during the course of the meeting. And he requested that the minutes be amended to note that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's been done at this stage. It may well be it has been attended to, I'm not sure. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Yeah, the CEO. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Baker, for the question. Um, the advice from the Manager of Council and Corporate Support is that those uh, minutes have been adjusted, um, placed on the hub and provided to elected members. So the minutes that Council is seeking, you're seeking Council to adopt tonight, incorporates that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Councillor Baker. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. 
Okay, so our mover is Deputy Mayor Treby, our seconder is Councillor Parker. Do I have any speakers against this item? If there are no speakers against the item, we'll go to the vote. Thank you. Twelve yes and one no. I think someone didn't vote for the first one. We had 11 and one, didn't we? So we've got 12-1 and Councillor Newen has voted against it. The rest of the council has supported the minutes. Item five, announcements by the mayor without discussion. First of all, um, I want to um, announce that the city of Wanneroo was a finalist um, in the presentation of the Yanship Yarning Circle. So this is a Waycross Award finalist. Um, Yanship's Yarning Circle is located at Kalbarri Park and was recently selected as the finalist by the Western Australian Council of Social Service at its Community Services Excellence Awards. I would like to acknowledge and congratulate the many city staff members involved in this project and in particular the city's childhood and youth services and parks and conservation management teams who played an integral role in bringing this fantastic initiative to life. The teams proudly worked with the Aboriginal artist Sharon Egan and local cultural consultant Derek Nanner, who shared their culture and knowledge with Yanship Secondary College students. The Yarning Circle features six Jarrah poles painted with native animals, plants and Aboriginal symbols to reflect the six seasons of the Noongar seasonal calendar. Yarning Circles traditionally provide a place for people to gather, talk, educate and build respectful relationships. It is the perfect place for the community to come together to celebrate the city's Aboriginal heritage and learn more about the Aboriginal culture. Collaborative projects like this allow us to delve deeper into reconciliation process to ensure stronger outcomes and positive impacts for our community. This initiative closely aligns with the city's reconciliation action plan 2018-19 to 2021-22 which guides us to achieve our vision for reconciliation in the local area. As a city, we will continue to build respectful relationships and connections to assist with achieving our reconciliation goals, broadening our networks to advance the great opportunities already in place and establish new initiatives which are inclusive and enriching. Well done and congratulations to all involved. And I just want to say I'm on the board of Yanship College and the teachers and the students were really enthusiastic and, and loved working towards that. And this is our award. So, Ms Terralink, do you want to come and grab it? And we have another special announcement to make. So I just want to take a moment to recognise one of the city's senior traffic engineers, Aaron Lee. Now I know his grandparents and partner in the um, audience looking to take photographs, I'm sure. In 2020, Aaron was unexpectedly diagnosed with severe heart failure. He was fortunate to receive a life-saving heart transplant in 2021. In the two years since receiving the gift of life through organ donation, Aaron has been able to return to his passion for cycling. As a paratransplant athlete, he now competes in national and international cycling events. Just last month, Aaron competed in the World Transplant Games, which were held right here in the city of Wanneroo at Wanneroo Raceway in Nirabup. The Games bring athletes from all over the world together and this year, athletes and teams from 45 countries came to Wanneroo for the world event. Aaron was one of these athletes, and I am so proud to say that he is now a world champion. <laughs> Not only winning gold in his time trial, but also bronze in his team trial and road race. His future as a competitor on the global stage as a para-transplant athlete is very bright. 
He is now training to head to the Australian Road Nationals in 2024 and to Germany for the 2025 World Games, then Belgium in 2027. Aaron's story is one of resilience and strength. He is living proof that organ donation has the power to give someone a second chance at living a full and healthy life. It is so important to discuss your organ donation wishes with your family before registering with Donate Life or through Medicare. Well done and congratulations, Aaron. We are all behind you and wish you every success in the future. I'm sure he'll be rattling the tin all around the city staff to get his funds ready for the next comp. Aaron, will you please join our CEO, Dan, and I for a photo? Thank you. <laughs> I love the good news stories of the City of Wanneroo. We are doing so well and we're punching way above our weight with what we do here. Item six, questions from council members. Do we have any questions about items on the agenda from our council members? Or would you rather ask them closer to the agenda items? Okay, I'll move on to item seven, petitions. We have two new petitions received tonight. Um, one received from Councillor Berry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to present a petition to put, install permanent CCTV at the car park at Queenscliff, Queenscliff Park, Waterland Point, Quinns Rocks. It's been signed by 16 of the local residents. They did have a temporary CCTV mass placed there, and during that time, antisocial behaviour was drastically reduced. Without the CCTV, the antisocial behaviour has increased again, hence the petition to install it on a permanent basis. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Berry. Councillor Rowe, do you have a petition? I do, Mayor. Uh, it's rather timely given another item on the agenda tonight. I have a petition from eight uh, signatures uh, requesting the closure of a pedestrian access way between Feathertop Rise and the Avenue in Alexander Heights. And I am advised that the Directorate has been informed of this petition. Thank you. Do I have a mover and seconder to receive the petitions? Moved Councillor Savitton, seconded Councillor Huntley. Do I have any speakers against? If not, uh, we will move to the vote. Cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously to receive the petitions. We also have update on petitions UP 015523 and the updates are provided on the agenda. That one's about installing speed humps on Beachside Parade Yanship. Declarations of interest by council members, including the nature and extent of the interest, are to be made at the commencement of the item to whom the interest relates. Declaration of interest forms are to be completed and handed to the Chief Executive Officer. Item eight, reports. Our first reports are for planning and sustainability. Madam Mayor, yes? if I may, just with respect to um, standing orders, if I can refer to item 3.2, order of business, just a request to bring forward items AS 020523, which is the, um, the Green Lifestyle Village item, and also the following item, AS 03, um, o, uh, AS 030523 as well, to the front of the agenda. Um, I'll second that. We'll put that to the vote. Councillors, could you vote whether to bring those two items forward or not? And that's passed unanimously. So item AS020523, I will move a procedural motion to defer it. Do I have a seconder for that? Frank Savitton. 
Um, I think it's sensible to defer it so Councillor Wright can be here and um, the residents can um, bring more information at the next council meeting. Um, are there any speakers against that procedural motion? If there are no speakers against that procedural motion, I ask that you vote on it, please. Councillor Huntley? Yes, now we have, and that was passed unanimously. So that item is now deferred to next month when Councillor Wright will be here as well. Okay, thank you. Um, we now go to item ASO 30523. Uh, we have an alternative for this um, if we don't get a mover and seconder on the item. So I open it for a mover and seconder, but please know that there is an alternative. If there's no mover and seconder for the substantive, I uh, render that lapsed. Um, Councillor Rowe, would you like to bring your alternative, please? And do you have a seconder for it? Deputy Mayor Treby. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity to bring this alternative recommendation. Uh, from the outset, I do want to acknowledge uh, the residents who are in attendance tonight, uh, who have been uh, patient, considered and respectful throughout this entire process. I also would like to acknowledge uh, Ms Laurel Gregory, who delivered the deputation last week, and I think Council would agree uh, was uh, very articulate in explaining the reasons why residents feel that this is a last resort strategy. Uh, so in terms of the reasons that I request your support for this alternative recommendation, I've broken it down into three sections. The first is that the original intent of the public access way or the pedestrian access way, I don't believe is relevant anymore uh, to the current usage of the site. It was originally intended as a transport link between Blackmore Avenue and Blackmore Primary School, which has not been in operation since 2009. And I think that is an integral factor in assessing why the PAW is no longer relevant. Broader to this um, alternative tonight, I do think council itself must start to consider uh, the policy we have in place for pedestrian access ways and particularly around whether they remain relevant uh, after uh, the sites that they connected to are either no longer operational or circumstances have changed. The second reason that I ask you to support this alternative is around access. Uh, the, the officer's report made mention to the fact that uh, the pedestrian access way provides access to a transport network and to a local shopping centre precinct. The map that's been provided to council members, I believe, indicates that access would not be substantially impacted by closure of this PAW. Residents would be able to access bus stops on Blackmore Avenue through Blackmore Park and they would be able to access New Park Shopping Centre through Templeton Crescent. So the access by closure of the PAW would not be significantly impaired. The final uh, point to note is that uh, due process has been followed by the residents, who I believe have uh, been upstanding members of the community by regularly reporting issues to the City of Wanneroo. They have undertaken all of the proper steps to try and uh, secure passive range of patrols, to phone police when there is criminal misconduct or antisocial behaviour, to no avail in circumstances where sometimes police have not attended hours afterwards due to the fact that the offences are not considered serious enough. The residents have also tried to uh, lodge complaints around non-compliance at the vacant building land as well on 13 Inez Place. So in terms of them discharging their responsibility, they have done more than enough on this matter. So for those reasons, I ask Council to please support this alternative recommendation. I believe it is a considered, appropriate response, and I would strongly urge you to stand alongside the Girraween residents in this regard. We are fully aware that this will be a long process and that ultimately the Department of Lands Planning and Heritage will be the responsible authority on this matter, but residents need to understand that Council is not standing in its way. So please support the alternative Thank you, Councillor Roll. Deputy Mayor Treby, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, Mayor Reitkin. Um, uh, certainly, I think the, um, uh, the points that uh, Councillor Roll has highlighted um, speak volumes to the, um, to the life and lifestyle that the local residents have had to endure for some considerable time. 
um, it is a fact that um, I too, uh, for several years, um, lived in Girraween and lived adjacent to a public access way. So if there's anybody um, sitting uh, on the uh, council this evening who absolutely understands what they've been exposed to, it is I. Um, and I was forced to move away. Um, it can be quite difficult and you do find yourself in a particular um, and uh, unenviable position as being part of the community exposed to um, antisocial and potentially illegal behaviour on a regular, ongoing and potentially 24 hour a day, seven day a week basis. One of the things, and I don't intend to um, increase or um, influence any of the points that Councillor Rowe has made because they are all absolutely correct and certainly heartfelt and, uh, um, and demonstrate the due diligence that the residents have gone through in a just and fair way. I will say this though, uh, and I wholeheartedly support the, uh, the uh, alternative recommendation. When um, planners at a state level look at um, planning and the layout of pedestrian networks, transport networks, and the way communities are, um, are set up in structure plans, um, the important element of human condition is not really uh, part of those considerations. It is simply lines on a map and the human condition and impacts on the immediate community are really taken into consideration. That is the role of council to do that. Um, we are here to be the voice of the community in a rationed way and bearing in mind the, uh, the eloquent uh, disposition that was placed before us last week and the heartfelt, um, certainly the heartfelt comments that were made this evening, uh, I have no hesitation into supporting Councillor Rowe's um, well thought through uh, alternative and I ask the rest of the council to also consider supporting it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Treby. Do I have any speakers against this? Councillor Miles has a question. I, <clears throat> yes, I am in support of it, but I just wanted to ask administration if they could put a timeline, a timeline for the public to understand. There's 14 steps been listed in here. Can we get a timeline from possibly whoever would have to be processing this to when it would be closed? Mr Singh? So you may, this is unknown to us as well. Um, City of Wanderoo hasn't gone through this process many times in, in recent past, so I'm not able to provide a time frame for this one. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, Mr. New, uh, Councillor Nguyen. Um, just a question. <clears throat> There's reference to potential costs that may be payable by the adjoining owners. Can you just <clears throat> uh, give an explanation on that, please? Mr. Singh? Through you, Mayor, my understanding is should this PAW approval be granted uh, ultimately after the process is complete, the land um, in those circumstances could go to the adjoining lot owners and there may be a possibility of um, payment made to the Department of Land and Heritage. But those things will come out as, as we go through the process and at, at the right time, um, lot owners will be advised by the relevant authorities. Thank you, Mr Singh. Do we have any other questions on this item? If there are no other questions on this alternative, please cast your vote. Carried unanimously. Thank you. How a pleasure. So we'll go back to PS 010523, consideration of amendment one to the Alcamos City Centre Activity Structure Plan, number 1889, sorry, following advertising. Do I have a mover for this item? Councillor Baker, seconder, Councillor Coetzee. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to uh, this? Yes, thank you very much indeed. The uh, most important paragraph, in my view, in the recommendation is paragraph number two in which the city reckons to the w, uh, recommends to the WAPC that uh, the uh, amendment be approved. Uh, if one looks at the amendment relative to the existing status quo amendment as we now speak today, or this nanosecond in time, there are several uh, major changes which will greatly enhance the Alcamos City Centre uh, site 
and the various pr new precincts planned for that centre site. What this amendment does is to further join the dots and fill in the small blank spaces that still exist in terms of what is proposed for the city centre in Alcamos. Uh, this will better inform members of the public and uh, obviously, of course, uh, no doubt it will spark interest in terms of what the future holds, particularly to people thinking of relocating to the uh, northern corridor or the northern coastal corridor. Uh, I do have some uh, questions, but uh, I, that, they're my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Do you have questions on this item? It's a couple of questions, by clarification. Well, probably for the benefit of the councillors, if you want to ask the questions now, and then we'll go yeah. to Councillor Coetzee yep. for the second up. Yep. Okay, yep. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, my uh, question is addressed to the Director of Planning and Strategy, Mr. Mark Dixon. Uh, the agenda has attached to it attachment number three. That appears on page 23 of the agenda. Uh, that uh, attachment uh, sets out the, the current status quo, so to speak, in respect of plan number activity, sorry, Alcamos City Centre Activity Structure Plan number 89. Uh, I'll just confirm that. I beg your pardon, it's page 24 of the agenda. In the bottom right-hand corner of that plan, it makes reference to ind indicative car park locations. It refers to three public car parks, uh, each having 100, as I read it, 150 ground bays and 450 level three bays. The total number of bays that will be available uh, at the indicative car parking locations adjacent to the train station is therefore 1,800 bays. Uh, that particular uh, indicative plan does not appear, uh, or there's no cross-referencing, so to speak, with that plan uh, with the actual plan that we're approving tonight, which, is, which appears at uh, attachment four. Uh, I'm just wondering, will that be replicated in attachment four, or is it simply understood that uh, the indicative plan of the number of bays, the location, et cetera, will be carried forward? Thanks. Mr Dixon. Um, thank you, and through you, Mayor, uh, the intent is that there will be um, parking provided um, through the new structure plan amendment. Um, those areas are broadly um, two areas um, to the north of the um, station, um, which will be provided primarily for the purposes of parking for uh, users of the new Yanchet rail line. Thank you, Mr Dixon. Is that all of your questions, Councillor Baker? Uh, just one final question regards the issue as to the opening of the uh, Mitchell Freeway and uh, uh, the rail line, the extension, of course, to Yanchip. Uh, of course, it's it stated in the report that uh, the, uh, the train line will open uh, uh, late, oh, sorry, the road network will be extended late 2023. That road network includes the Mitchell Freeway. Uh, is, is that still the case as it's so state that the Mitchell Freeway extension will definitely be open prior to uh, the end of December this year? Please. Mr Singh. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. That is my understanding. It is um, main road still advising it is mid-2023. Thank you. I, I, just to follow up, if I can, please, Madam Mayor. This is the important part. Yes, if I can, please. Uh, it notes uh, in paragraph six, paragraph six on page three, that the opening of those roads, including the freeway, will coincide with the anticipated opening of the Alcamos train station. Now, is that still the case? Because, as, as I understand it, the, there's a hell of a lot of roadworks that have to be done north um, of uh, Edmonton. I'll pass that straight to, to Mr. Yanch Dixon, Councillor. It may well be it's going to be open in stages. I don't, I don't know. Mr. Thank Dixon. You. Um, through you, uh, Mayor, the operational uh, date for the um, station uh, and the information, the latest information we have is by um, the end of this year. Um, so that's when, that's the latest information we've received from Metronet. Thank you. Councillor Kowitzi, um, would you like to speak to this item? Um, thank you. I'm not going to say too much. Um, all I can say is that I'm happy that we are this far so far and um, the precinct plan is a good read. So a lot of the residents who have questions of what is going to happen there, I can send them to this now. So I'm happy that it's moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coetzee. Are there any speakers against this item? Is there no speakers against... You want a question, do you, Councillor Nguyen? Okay, one question. I just need one question. Um, just on page 108, in relation to item 16, where there's a, <clears throat> a table 
with the the mixed density, and it's got 46% for the semi-attached and then 20% for multiple dwellings. Um, what happened to the balance? That is the 34%, um, would that be just the standard residential uh, mix? Mr Dixon. Um, through you, Mayor, that, that mix is in, indicative, so that it, it may be that that would be achieved, um, but it could be a balance of between those two. Okay. Thank you, Mr Dixon. Do we have any speakers against the item? Um, miss, if there are no speakers against the item, please cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. We move on to item PS020523, consideration of amendment 202 to district planning scheme number two following advertising. Do I have a mover and seconder for this item? I move Deputy Mayor Treby, seconded Councillor Savitton. Deputy Mayor Treby, would you like to speak to this? Thank you, Mayor Atkin. Um, I think the, um, certainly the item that was uh, presented to Council um, last week at the briefing session has um, received uh, considerable um, focus through um, a range of forums as well as going through the, uh, the Nirubup um, Industrial Area Working Group. Um, I commend the, uh, uh, the administration and director of um, planning uh, on the uh, nature and um, scale of the report. Uh, I think it's quite uh, quite a good report. Uh, addresses the the details and concerns that certainly uh, members of the Nira Bup Industrial uh, Area Working Group raised. And I have um, my questions were answered, and I wholeheartedly support it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Truby. Councillor Savitton, would you like to speak to this item? Uh, very little further to add other than to say that the, uh, the near above industrial estate is moving forward in accordance with um, the city's um, uh, direction and um, following the advertising, etc., etc. Uh, this area, I look forward to this area actually developing over the next uh, uh, considerable number of years and um, um, allowing a supply of industrial land uh, of which there's very little left in the city of Wanneroo to progress to um, uh, a substantial development. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Savitton. Do I have any speakers against this item? If there are no speakers against this item, please cast your vote, councillors. And that was passed unanimously. Item PSO 20, uh, no, sorry, PSO 30523, consideration of amendment number seven to Nirabup Industrial Area, agreed local structure plan number 17, following advertisement. Do I have a mover and seconder for this item? Uh, Ma'am, if I may, can I please declare an interest at the outset for this item, please? Uh, yes, you may declare uh, an uh, interest. Thank you, uh, Mayor Aiken. Yes, I wish to make a declaration of impartiality statement. I advise that a respective agenda item PS03-05 forward slash 23, uh, my self-managed super fund, in respect of which my wife and I are trustees, owns a, an industrial unit in Warman Street in Narraba. I, I declare that uh, as a consequence there may be a perception that my impartiality on this matter may be affected. I declare that I will consider this matter on its merits and vote accordingly. Thank you. So, Deputy Mayor Treby wants to move this. Do I have a seconder? Yes, Councillor Savitton. Deputy Mayor Treby, would you like to speak to this yep. item? Thank you, Madam. Uh, sorry. Mayor Aitken. I nearly slipped up. Um, uh, this, of course, does follow closely behind the previous item uh, and speaks about the Nirubup industrial area, and we have long identified this as being um, a major major employment hub for the northern corridor of um, the greater Perth and Peel region. Um, we are seeing, uh, for those who um, have seen recent presentations on uh, some major investments in that area, not, uh, not limited to, but including the, um, the Australian Automation and Robotics Facility 
is a uh, significant investment and uh, it will be of world renown. Um, that's a major catalyst and a, um, uh, a bolt hold, if you like, to development in this particular area. This is a significant uh, document uh, that's before us this evening uh, and the motion to support this is another step on the path to making sure that we're providing and supporting employment and business self-sufficiency in the greater northern region of the, uh, of, uh, the city of, uh, of uh, Perth and the northern suburbs within the metropolitan regional area. And I think this is a fantastic report. And I'm just dying to wait to see how this progresses and becomes an absolute success that it promises to be. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Treby. Councillor Savitton. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, totally agree with the, the comments made by Deputy Mayor Treby. Um, I'm looking forward to um, this area being developed as a ro robotic specialist area, in, and that is the way it seems to be heading. But as I said uh, in the previous, um, uh, the, the previous item, um, this particular area will service uh, uh, Wanneroo for the next 20 to 30 years. I'm looking forward to um, the transition uh, that this area is going through and the supply chain of which Wanneroo has a very, very uh, short supply uh, being created for this area to service the industrial needs and the employment needs for the northern suburbs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Savitton. Do I have any speakers against this item? If I have no speakers against this item, please, councillors, cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. I go to item um, ASO 10523, which is appointment of delegates to the Roadwise Advisory Group. Do I have any nominations for that group, please? Yes, Councillor Parker. You're nominating for the group? A uh, second person nominating for the Roadwise Group. Well, we, Councillor Herridge is already on the group, and these are two counts. We need two more councillors. Councillor Savitton, is anyone else want to go on the right roadwise group? If not, we will just slip those names in and take the vote. If there's no, um, we have to move and second at first. But okay, so do I have a mover for Councillor? Parker and Councillor Savitton. Yes, Councillor Herridge moves it. Who seconds it? Councillor Huntley. Councillor Herridge, do you want to speak for the item? Just to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Huntley, do you want to speak to the item? Yeah, I, again, I say thank you to both of you. It is a worthwhile opportunity and uh, let's hope we can put some teas and coffees on the Wanneroo Road. And on that note, uh, if, uh, there, are there any speakers against the item? If there are no speakers against the item, please, councillors, cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. So we go to ASO 4523, response to petition PTO 20223, requesting the city investigate damage from London plane trees in the city of Wanneroo. We do have an amendment from Councillor Smith, but we do need someone to move and second the substantive. So, uh, Councillor Baker will move the substantive. Anyone like to second it? Councillor Coetzee second it. Um, uh, Councillor Smith, you would like to move your amendment. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Parker. Okay, Councillor Smith, would you like to speak to your amendment, please? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to have the fourth point as an addition, um, just to reiterate to our residents that we do care about concerns that they have um, um, and that if they have any concerns about what they see as hazardous trees, that there is a process that they can um, bring their concerns to administration um, and that they can be investigated there. So this is about... Uh, making people aware of uh, what they can do and, and why we uh, protect our trees as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Parker, would you like to speak to this amendment? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and obviously I do support it. 
Um, I would like to say, though, firstly, I would like to thank the, re the residents who brought this petition to council. The resulting report before us tonight by the city's administration is comprehensive and highly informative. While there is important recognition that mature large London plane trees can do damage to infrastructure, I'm confident that the existing effective controls and maintenance procedures manage them effectively, as was in Ridgewood and will continue to be the case throughout the city. The importance of tree cover throughout the city is vital. Educating the residents as to the importance of tree coverage is a responsibility that the city's administration and council need to address and ultimately enforce. By administration undertaking the management of the city's trees under the existing policy, the community will feel confident and supported and the battle to turn community, community sentiment around into actions to save and increase urban tree coverage will be achieved. Thank you, Administration, for this report, and thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Parker. Do I have any speakers against the amendment? If I have no speakers against the amendment, I ask that my fellow councillors cast their vote, please. And that was passed unanimously. So now we go to the substantive. Um, Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to the substantive as amended, please? Madam Mayor, no, it has overwhelming merit, primarily because of the amendment uh, that's just been approved. Thank you. Councillor Coetzee, would you like to speak to the item? Thank you. Do I have any uh, speakers against this item? If I have no speakers against this item, please, councillors, cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. I go to ASO 50523, response to the petition PTO 2323, requesting council remove the verge trees at two residential properties situated in Marangaroo. Do I have a mover for this? Councillor Parker and a seconder, Councillor Herridge. Councillor Parker, would you like to speak to this? Happy with the report as is, Madam Mayor. Councillor Herridge, would you like to speak to this? Thank you. Um, Councillor Parker just filled it in. Um, and thanks to fellow councillors for helping out because this is obviously not within the South Ward, it's the South West. Um, it's very hard to make that distinction through our boundary, so thanks for the help out. My pleasure. Do I have any speakers against this item? If I have no speakers against this item, please, councillors, cast your vote. And it's passed unanimously. We go to ASO 60523, Welga E quote 22135 for commingled recyclables, sorting and process services. Do I have a mover for this item? Councillor Savitton, do I have a seconder? Councillor Rowe. Councillor Savitton, would you like to speak to this item? Really not much to add. Uh, the process is good and um, I, the recommendation uh, I urge Council to support. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rowe, do you want to speak to this item? Not much to add, uh, Mayor, other than that the Director uh, answered questions so wonderfully last week and uh, uh, Armani was there as well to be able to provide his expertise. Yes, that was fantastic. Do I have any speakers against this item? If I have no speakers against this item, please, councillors, cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. So we've got the proposed heritage management category changes to Sun City Precinct, CPO 10523. Do we have a mover for this and a seconder? Mover, Councillor Baker, seconder, Councillor Coetzee. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to uh, this yeah. item? Yes, thank you. Mayor, Mayor, can I just do a declaration, please? Yes, Councillor Miles, you can do a declaration. Thank you. With regard to item, um, oh, geez, I just lost it for there for a moment. 0523. Uh, um, I disclose that uh, I'm a Commodore of the Sun City Yacht Club 
and have an interest in this matter. And as a consequence, there may be a perception that my impartiality of the matter may be affected and I declare that I will consider this matter on all its merits and vote accordingly. Thank you, Councillor Miles. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak uh, to yes, this Yes, thank item? you, Mayor Ackie, and I'll be very brief. Uh, as we're all aware, the Sun City Precinct was formally entered into the state's heritage register on 28 December last year. Uh, this report and the proposed recommendation is, if you like, a follow-on from that, in which uh, we're asking that the uh, seven child places referred to in the report be upgraded from the existing maintenance categories to the highest premium category, namely category one. Uh, this upgrade will further assist in bolstering the heritage protections uh, to uh, these child places within the, uh, within the Sun City uh, precinct. It will also, of course, uh, by doing so, also bolster, so to speak, the protections affecting that precinct throughout. Uh, of course, I'm not suggesting in any way that uh, these uh, develop or the uh, entry of the uh, precinct in the register or of uh, these, uh, the upgrading of these uh, maintenance categories will prevent uh, development within the Sun City Precinct. However, uh, regard must be had to the heritage listing and in, in particular, the heritage maintenance classification attached to each of the seven child places referred to in the report. Uh, this is absolutely critical uh, in terms of preserving the heritage of this unique precinct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Okay, Councillor Coetzee, do you want to speak to this? Councillor Baker have covered most of it. Um, all I'm happy about that the precinct will just be covered more, more protected. Thank you. Do I have any speakers against this item? If there are no speakers against this item, councillors, please cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. CPO 20523, disbandment of North Coast Cycling Facility Master Plan Implementation Working Group. Councillor Coetzee may move it and Councillor Baker second it. Councillor Coetzee, would you like to speak to this item, please? Yes, please. I think it'll be the last time I will speak about this as well. I've been on this group for many, many years and um, it's done. It's successful. People are training there, our competitions is happening, and other sports can also use it as well. I actually would like and hope Dr. Howard is watching the video tonight, um, <laughs> because I would like to say thank you for him to never give up on his dream. And I would also like to say thank you to everybody who was involved in this project. And um, I think Wanneroo, I think we are the envy of other cities for having this cycle track. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coetzee. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to this item? Uh, yes, Mayor, I cannot be very brief. Look, I would also like to congratulate and thank uh, Chris Howard for his uh, dogged determinist to see the determination to see this become a reality. I would also like to congratulate and thank uh, Councillor Sonia Coetzee, who, uh, being quite bashful, <laughs> didn't mention her role as well. She also played a key, a key leading role on behalf of the uh, then ward uh, councillors when this was first mooted. And also, uh, it's good to see, of course, that the screen I queried or the operational functionality of the screen that I queried during the briefing session is, it has now in situ and it's working perfectly well. So uh, it's all done and dusted. There's no need to continue this committee and that's why we're winding it up. And congratulations to all those involved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Any speakers against this? Oh, Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor Treby has a question. Uh, thank you, Mayor Aitken. Um, let me phrase my question thusly. Um, does council agree that it would also be appropriate to recognise the, the work of former councillor Natalie Sangali with this particular project? Because I know she worked very closely with um, councillor Kurtzi and, uh, and of course the do good Dr Howard uh, to also work on this. That's my question. Um, I, th I think that would be appropriate and um, I can acknowledge Councillor, former Councillor Sangali for all of the effort she put in with that. Um, maybe we can send her a note of thanks as well. Um, yes, for you, Madam, um, for you, Mayor. Uh, we certainly could do that under your signature. Thank you. Is that adequate response, Deputy Mayor Treby? Um, it, it, was, it, it effectively responds to the, to the question in the manner with which it was put. Thank you. Are there any speakers against the item? If there are no speakers against the item, councillors, please cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. 
So we go to item CPO 30523, Horse Exercise Area, Timely Hostess Muse, Community Engagement Outcomes. I have a mover, Councillor Miles, seconder, Councillor Huntley. Councillor Miles, would you like to speak to this item? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is um, uh, the horse exercise area. It was asked by the community uh, a little while ago. Um, it was an area of, of land that they sort of used but wasn't um, entirely in use because of the connection problems. But I understand that most of that has happened. Most of the bridle paths in and around that area all congregate to this this piece of land, uh, hence why we we're asking, uh, we did the community engagement and obviously progressing towards having it as a horse exercise area. In actual fact, it's the only exercise area that the city will have in its boundaries, um, which I think is very, very good. It means that horses won't have to travel far to get an appropriate level of exercise. Um, it is a very large lot and I think over time it will become instrumental for that area's, area's um, progression going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Miles. Councillor Huntley, would you like to speak to this item? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to, to actually say that um, I've, I've gone down and seen this area. It is an area that is not very well kept and we will have to look at how we are going to keep this area because I think it will attract a lot of horse boxes. It's going to bring a lot of horses into the area and we are going to need some form of uh, area for these boxes to park because it is a residential uh, cul-de-sac there. But it is off the main road, which is absolutely excellent, and it does give an opportunity for us to have a horse exercise area as we are really struggling to find an area on a beach. So this would be... This is the next best thing. It's fantastic. So I support this wholeheartedly and I hope you will all too. Thank you. Do you, do you have a speaker? Do you have a question or do you want to speak against this item? Uh, yes, Mayor, I can have a question. I previously foreshadowed the question to Mr Dixon, if I can, please. OK. Uh, Councillor yeah, Baker, thank, please thank you, Mayor, do your My question is addressed to Mr Dixon. Uh, in relation to the permit that's required under the city's animal locum laws to enable this area to be used as a horse exercise area or exercising area, and given that the city is the owner of the land, is it necessary to obtain any planning, any additional planning style uh, consents from the city to enable uh, this particular block of land or parcel land to be used for the additional purpose to which this recommendation relates? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Mr Dixon. Uh, thank you, and through you, Matt, um, the land is reserved as public open space in our scheme. The objective of the reserve for public open space is to provide for active and passive recreation uses. I consider that the exercising of horses as proposed in the report falls under this objective and therefore no development approval is required for this activity to occur. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Dixon. Do I have any speakers against this item? If there are no speakers against this item, councillors, please cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. We now go to CSO 10523, the financial activity statement for the period ended the 31st of March 2023. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Mover, Councillor Savitton, seconder, Councillor Rowe. Councillor Savitton, do you want to speak to this? Uh, no, Mayor, thank you. Councillor Rowe, do you want to speak to this? Nothing to add, Mayor. Do I have any speakers against this item? There are no speakers against the item. Please, councillors, cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously. I now go to item CSO 20523, warrant of payments for the period to 31st of March 2023. There was a question on this item about a statement um, about um, icy poles that were purchased from one of our councillors. And I just want to put it on the record that Parks Maintenance have provided hydrolyte icy poles to staff, which are a little bit more expensive than normal icy poles, who work outdoors in the heat of summer to assist them with ensuring they remain hydrated whilst working outdoors. The decision to purchase the icy poles was made by Parks Maintenance Management in consultation 
with work, health and safety. Would you agree that this is essential to look after our staff when they're working in hot areas? And I'll put that towards um, the CEO. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, um, increasingly we are more um, considering our health and wellbeing of our staff and in particular our outside crew who work under heated conditions during the summer periods and extended periods of time. Um, and I'm very supportive of the actions of the Director of Assets in being proactive in managing the safety of his team. Thank you, Mr CEO. Do I have a mover for the warrant of payments? Deputy Mayor Treby, do I have a second? Uh, Councillor Berry. Deputy Mayor Treby, would you like to speak to this? Yep, thank you, uh, Mayor Aitken, and I was going to mention that very point. Um, and of course, the, uh, the the fact that the um, the IC polls on face value seem quite strange, but when you take into consideration the extent of the new work health and safety legislation, uh, the administration through the CEO as the person conducting a the, a business or undertaking has responsibility for their health and safety. So whilst on face value it may appear flippant, um, it is a very real and uh, in the emerging area of climate change uh, increasingly so uh, concerning area that we will need to be taking and putting our focus towards. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Treby. Councillor Berry, would you like to speak to this item? No, I've got nothing to add. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Do I have any speakers against this item? If not, I have no speakers against this item. Please, councillors, cast your vote. And that was passed unanimously, thank you. We now go to item CSO 30523, proposal for levering, levying differential rates 2023-24. Do I have a mover and a seconder for this? Move Deputy Mayor Treby, seconded Councillor Rowe. Deputy Mayor Treby, would you like to speak to this? Uh, only to say that this is a requirement under the Local Government Act um, and it's part of the budgeting process and um, the advertising of the proposed differential rate at this time uh, meets our obligations under the Act. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Treby. Uh, Councillor Rowe. Okay, do I have any speakers against this proposal? If I have no speakers against this proposal, please, councillors, cast your vote. No, we've got them now. So we have 12 supporting this and one against, and the councillor voting against is Councillor Newen. We now go to <coughs> CSO 40523, proposed modifications to lease the Commonwealth of Australia Department of Defence over portion of reserve 280058 in Madeley. Do I have a mover and a seconder for this item? Um, <clears throat> Moved, Councillor Rowe, seconded, Councillor Baker. Councillor Rowe, would you like to speak to this? Uh, only to say that it's good to see uh, the item come before us and the progression uh, of the ultimate development of this site, this being the, um, the willingness of the cadets to um, depart with some of the land to be able to build the access road. I think Council would recall that recently uh, we unanimously supported the ground lease for the Wildflower Society and I think Council would also hope uh, that the Northern Suburbs Men's Shed lease, which is mentioned in this item, is progressed in a timely manner. Thank you, Councillor Rowe. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to this item? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor Aiken. Okay, do I have any speakers against this item? If I have no speakers against this item, councillors, please cast your vote. And that was supported unanimously. So item nine, uh, motions on notice, we have none. Item 10, urgent business, we have none. Item 11, con confidential. Um, if there is any discussion on this report, we will have to go behind closed doors. If not, we can go straight to the vote. Do I have a mover? 
um, I'll, we'll go behind closed doors. Okay, so I'll move it to go behind closed doors, Deputy Mayor Treby and Councillor Sabitton. All in favour, let's hold a vote. And that was 12 supporting, one against, and the councillor against was Councillor Nguyen. And um, CR 010523 acquisition of land from lot 5326 Nangara Road Lansdale for the widening of Nan Nangara Road was passed unanimously. The recommendation was that one council approves the acquisition of the portion of lot 5326 Nangara Road Lansdale, identified in the administration report from Andrew Gerard Dunn and Michaelia Kim Dunn as trustees for the Dunn Family Trust and Macor Investments Proprietary Limited, um, ACN 612560552, at the agreed amount to be funded from the Town Planning Scheme Number 5 funds, and two, authorises the Chief Executive Officer or a nominee of the Chief Executive Officer to execute the contract of sale and any other associated documentation between the City and Andrew Gerard Dunn and Michaelia Kim Dunn as trustees for the Dunn Family Trust and Macor Investments Proprietary Limited, ACN 612-560-522, in relation to item one above. So, now we go to... We've done CR 010523. The item 12, the date of the next meeting, which will be at the council members' briefing session, which is at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, 6th of June, 2023, to be held at Council Chambers Civic Centre, 23 Dundabar Road, Wanneroo. And item 13, I now declare this meeting closed at um, 7... 20... 
23.